If you're watching this video, then like me, you're probably optimistic for higher Bitcoin prices during this bull cycle. However, before BTC can move substantially higher, we really need these metrics to start turning bullish. Today, we're going to be looking at metrics that need to turn bullish for a BTC rally. And where better to start than the financial stress index versus BTC? Now, this is taking into account a huge amount of financial, fundamental macroeconomic data to really try and gain a perspective on the current healthiness of the US economy. And what we could see is a few weeks ago, this bombed out at minus 0.94. We actually made a video that the economy might be too good at this point because this was a level we'd never seen before. It was least the least stressful i guess it ever been and typically what we see is in a cyclical nature when things are too good they end up turning a bit bad and when things are too bad they hopefully typically end up turning pretty positive positive. and what we could see is this actually bottomed out pretty much as bitcoin topped out and now we've seen these metrics actually tick up a little bit maybe we're seeing a little bit more stress in the economy from a macro perspective and if we go to this image here and i just hide myself we can see that the Bitcoin trajectory catalysts, which are the most influential factors impacting the price appreciation or depreciation for Bitcoin, include macroeconomic data as one of the foundational pillars in increasing the Bitcoin price action. If from a macro perspective, everything is bearish, then it's unlikely that we're going to really fulfill Bitcoin's upside potential. And if we just go back to something like the Bitcoin versus US dollar chart, we can see that the DXY has recently had a massive rally to the upside. And it's probably more apparent if we look on the year on year chart for DXY returns. If we just zoom in here to see the most recent bit of price action, we could see as this decreased very rapidly is when the Bitcoin price increased from around $40,000 to its most recent new all time high at $74,000. And as this started rallying massively, it was when Bitcoin started dumping quite a lot. So why is the DXY gaining strength? Well, there's quite a few economic factors that may be a little bit more bearish that really could do with being a bit more bullish if we really want to see Bitcoin rally considerably higher. If we go to the high yield credit chart here, we can see that the risk appetite for high yield credit bonds has actually been decreasing quite a lot. And especially again, in line with the DXY starting to increase a lot, we're seeing this really start to decrease. And throughout every single one of Bitcoin's cycles, we typically see this rally substantially to the upside when we see a huge amount of risk appetite in traditional markets for these high yield credit bonds. We can go down here and just get a little bit more of an analysis on how this is actually formed. But really, what we need is not just a bullish risk on sentiment for cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. We need people to want to buy risk on assets in all markets. That gives us bullish conditions throughout the entire economy. And if we go to something like the manufacturing PMI, this might be one of the underlying causes as well is we've actually seen this start to decrease after starting to increase quite noticeably pretty much from when bitcoin set its bottom we've now turned a little bit and starting to see this decrease and this could be an impact of the federal funds target range which has been sat at a pretty high rate for an extended period of time now and a lot of people especially recently have been waiting for a pivot from the fed to try and start seeing interest rates decreasing which everyone it's kind of believing will bring much more bullish economic conditions. Whether that will happen immediately or will take a little bit of time is kind of up for debate. But alongside that, we can also see that the federal balance sheet, if we just isolate over the past few months here, had kind of began decreasing or the rate of shrinking had decreased. However, over the past few weeks, this has once again turned so that the federal balance sheet is actually again accelerating in its decrease. This is quantitative tightening which doesn't really give the most risk on sentiment for pretty much any economy. And if we go to something like the S&P 500 versus Bitcoin correlation, we can see that traditional equity indexes like the S&P are also having a bit of a decline as well. And given Bitcoin's massive correlation to these equity indexes, specifically US equity indexes like the S&P, once one's bearish, typically the other one's not doing so great either. So really, this is probably due to the like we said, impact of a strengthening dollar, not so great macroeconomic outlook, and especially if we go to something like global M2 liquidity. So not just looking at US specifically here, but if we go to the global M2 money supply, we can again see if we just zoom in here over the past few weeks, this has started to contract. The money supply is starting to decrease. And if we look over Bitcoin's entire history, we can see once the money is increasing, once the fiat supply is increasing, 
probably the demand for fiat is decreasing. Therefore, people want something that can produce some sort of yield or provide some returns on their investment. And risk on assets like Bitcoin provide the perfect place to park your capital if you want some outsized returns. So once we see these huge increases in the money supply, we see Bitcoin's price typically rally alongside that. And once we see these contractions in the money supply, when it starts shrinking, these have always aligned with Bitcoin bear cycles. And the fact that we're now seeing this decrease isn't the most bullish sign for BTC in the coming weeks and months. So I think until we get a little bit of a pivot on this macroeconomic data that provide a little bit more of a bullish conditions, bullish sentiment, then we're probably limiting Bitcoin's upside potential. If we just go back to this chart here, just because macroeconomic data is number one doesn't necessarily mean that Bitcoin can't increase in price on its own because the other factors, the Bitcoin fundamentals, like we just seen with a halving, like we can see with the liquid supply continuing to decrease, just looking at basic supply and demand economics, on-chain data, like we can see, not an excessive amount of unrealized gains from new market participants and the technicals like we can see with market cycle charts, Bitcoin getting overextended of funding rates going incredibly positive, people just betting and too much leverage entering the market. We can see that this doesn't necessarily restrict Bitcoin's price from moving higher, but to some extent it will probably limit how high we can go. So really if we want to see Bitcoin move considerably higher, we really could do with this macroeconomic data turning in our favor. Also, if you haven't already, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to ensure you're receiving all of our content as soon as it's released. Make sure to check out all the resources we've discussed today, as well as the many more that are all available on lookintobitcoin.com, your number one source for Bitcoin information. So just to summarize, global liquidity increasing is one of the key catalysts for exponential price increases for Bitcoin. And recently, we've actually seen a contraction in the worldwide money supply. Alongside this, we've also seen a rally in the strength of the dollar, a shift in traditional markets to more risk off sentiment and general macro financial stress increasing, like we could see with the manufacturing PMI, high yield credit appetite. Pretty much every macroeconomic data point is pointing towards less bullish conditions than we'd probably ideally want. And while Bitcoin is still very correlated to traditional markets, particularly equity indexes like we could see with the S&P 500, a bearish macro environment definitely limits Bitcoin's upside potential. If you liked this video, then please visit lookintobitcoin.com where you can also consider becoming a site subscriber to gain access to professional resolution charts, advanced macro and portfolio data tools like we've looked at today, in-depth crypto industry reports, live and personalized indicator alerts, private training view scripts, and more for a fraction of the standard industry price. And let me know what your thoughts are on the current macroeconomic conditions for Bitcoin, traditional assets, other markets that you trade and invest in. As I said, let me know, do you think we're going to be potentially a little bit more bearish for the coming weeks and months until we see a pivot, until we see some quantitative easing and the M2 money supply increasing? Or do you think that in spite of that, Bitcoin can still rally to new exponential all-time highs? And this is really only one small part in Bitcoin's entire ecosystem and market dynamics. As I said, let me know in the comments below and on social media. I look forward to reading and replying to all of them. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.